Today we're going to talk about how to take your tables and make them look a lot like spreadsheets, making them more comfortable a lot of times for your users. Because there are many times when you're presenting data in your database and you don't necessarily want to wrap your data into a data sheet form, but you'd rather just present the table as a data sheet. Well, there are some formatting options that allow you to make to pretty it up, make it look good, so that it uh, looks like you put some effort into putting it forth, but you didn't need the overhead of a form, so you just formatted the table. So let's let's look at that table formatting. So we have a products table here. You know, it it's kind of nondescript. It looks a lot like a spreadsheet. You see the titles up there. You see the grid lines that are showing in very light gray. Typical for what you'd see when you opened up a spreadsheet and it was just in its native format. But a lot of times you want to make it look a little bit better. So up here in your text formatting box, this down arrow here allows you to manage grid lines. You can turn them off here. If I turned them off here, you'd notice that I just get a blank white slate behind the data. If I click on here again, I can turn them back on. I can also change the color if I want here. It is the grid line color. It's that, that light gray or what appears to be light gray. It might be a light brown. Um, but I can, I can go over here and make it a dark gray, for example. And when I click OK, it gives me more dramatic grid lines. Okay. Now, another thing that is easy to do with a spreadsheet is to alternate the background color. So let's say that I want to uh, add some different background colors here, and I'm going to then choose a lighter one here so that I have these alternating colors row by row. It just allows your user to see a little bit better as they read across the row. So I've changed my grid lines. They look a little more dramatic. I've got my coloring in there. Now what I want to do is I want to, instead of showing you how grid lines differentiate your different cells, what if I was to do a raised platform here? Now notice, for some reason, this first color always changes on me, but I'm going to change it back to the colors that I had before. And now with raised, I don't have a choice of the color because uh, the divot or the dip between each of the rows determines the gradient color in between each of the columns and rows. So when I click OK here, it gives you a little bit more of a three-dimensional sort of look, and that can look pretty nice. Now, that's what you can do in order to make your spread your data structures look a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and leave this behind now and, and go on to the next thing, and that's aligning the data. Like, for example, I have card number here. And even though it's a text field, it's left aligned by nature. They're mostly numbers, so I want them to actually be right aligned. So I can go up here just to my text formatting box here and right align it. It looks just like the text formatting boxes you see in Word and Excel both. And if I right align it, the column right aligns. Now, I don't always have to, to touch just the column header. I can just put my cursor in a cell here. And in doing that, the entire column aligns. Now, you notice that when I clicked that single cell, that the entire column aligned. That is one big difference between Excel and a database, because the database treats each record as a separate entity by itself. The entire table will align to whatever you have the one record aligned to. So I know in Excel, you can differentiate between a single cell. You can have one left justified and the next row down. You can have it right justified if you want, but not so in Access. So now I've kind of prettied those things up. Let's say I don't want to, I don't want to show the JPEG name of the particular pictures, what they call picture small. I can hide this one by right clicking and go down here to hide fields. Let's say I want to hide the features, for example. I can right click and hide fields. Oops, I, maybe I didn't want to hide that particular field. That I found out that a user wants it. All I then have to do is right click here and I click on unhide fields and I get this nifty little dialog box and I can, you see the picture small and features is not checked, meaning they're hidden. So if I turn features back on, the, the row appears back in my column here. So 
I have that back. So by right clicking the header, you can easily hide and unhide your, your fields. Now that also exists up here in the more down, down button here for records. So you can hide fields and unhide fields down here. But what I want to show you here is freeze fields. Remember freeze panes in Excel? This allows you to also freeze panes in much the same way. So if I click the, the title part here and I click more and I click freeze panes, you'll notice that as I scroll to the right, that it keeps the left column static like I expected. Now, one thing I noticed as I was doing it here in Access, I'm going to unfreeze all panes, see all fields here, and unfreezing all fields there allows me to, you know, have them put back together like they were, so they scroll all together again. So what I want to do now is show you that, let's say I want the first three columns here to be frozen. So I'll highlight card number here, because this is the way you do it in Excel. You just hide the row or you hide the column, and then you click up here to freeze fields. Well, in Access, what happens is it wants all the leftmost fields frozen and doesn't allow you to have fields to the left of a field uh, unfrozen. So it actually moves the field. It picks it up, takes it over there. Well, I didn't really want that result. That wasn't the thing that I cared about. So I'm going to unfreeze the panes and I'm going to take and move this back over where it belongs. Now, since I don't want to um, move the one, one field, but I do want all three fields to be frozen, if I highlight all three, you'll notice that I can then go up to more and freeze fields. And now as I go, the three fields are now frozen. Okay. Now, one last item. Let's say you want to sort or filter your data. This is going to be very familiar for all you Excel users out there because you click this down arrow here and it's nearly the exact same box. Uh, let's go over here to the model and get a little bit better list of the model because I've got more fields filled in. And so I've got blanks. Notice down here I have blanks so I could identify those blanks. Uh, or I could just say, hey, I want to just see, um, I just want to see the Bonnevilles. So I'm going to unselect this and go down here and let's see what I have in the way of Bonnevilles. So I've got one Pontiac Bonneville, a 1958 model, and that is in inventory. So I can cl clear the filter here. Works the same as in Access or in Excel. And let's say I want to filter on the make and I want only Alfa Romeos. Okay. So I see Alfa Romeo there and I can click on it and I have one of those models in stock. Now, if I go clear this, I can also sort. Notice I can sort A to Z or Z to A. So I can sort if it's numerical going from one to infinity or from infinity back to one, whatever numbers are in there, or I can sort A to Z or Z to A, either one, just like you do in a spreadsheet. Now, when you exit the database, the table here. When you exit the table, it asks you, you want to save the changes to the design. If I say yes, those changes are saved. And I, when I call it up either through a menu that I pr produce for a user, or if I double click on it, it'll keep the, uh, the information there, just like I had it before. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel so that I can keep growing and, and uh, provide more content for everyone here. I hope to see you again later. Thanks.